So um, if you are a parent who is watching this video or um, a very passionate medical student, we have a very special guest here today with us for a very special interview. Let's get to know her. This is Dr. Vidhi Chan. Hi. Hi, doctor. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing fine too. Well, uh, as you see here, Dr. Vidhi Chan uh, is a passed out medical graduate from Vitev State Medical University, one of the most prestigious universities in the Republic of Belarus. How was your university? What was it like to study in one of the best universities in Belarus? Oh, I'd say it was a wonderful experience to be able to study at VSMU. And it's been just about one and a half to two months since I've come back and I miss it so, so much already. Right. Now, you came from VSMU back to Sri Lanka in the hope of sitting for the X16 ERPM exam. That's right. How has your training been so far? Is it difficult? Are you ready for it? So we had already started preparation for it around our fourth year when we started our clinical studies at university. So there has been a slow but progressive sort of preparation for it. But coming back here, we got a bit of a shock because the exam has been pre-poned and it's a bit earlier than we liked. But well, I'd like to think that little progress is still progress every day as long every as I'm doing there. something. Yes. Um, okay, now there's a lot of talk, a talk in the town about uh, the university's academics, about wanting to learn Russian. Mm -hmm. Could you maybe give a little bit of an insight to our viewers about uh, how exactly is the academics done at Vitebsk? So all our six years of education were completely in English, mm -hmm. except for when we had to speak to patients, which of course we did in Russian because that was their native tongue and they weren't comfortable in English. But that was never a problem for us mm -hmm. because from the onset itself, we had been learning the Russian language in our classes. Our first year was mainly focused on helping us understand how to speak in a daily dialect, sort of to help us book cabs or go to the grocery store, so on. And second year onwards, we started clinical Russian, which greatly helped us in our clinical studies and how to take a detailed history from a patient, understand their concerns and how to help them. So there was no difficulty at all in that sense. So, um, there's a rumor that says if you go to Viteb State Medical University, you have to study in Russian. Is that true? No, that's not true at all. Our education is solely in English. But like I said, we do learn Russian to help us communicate with the patients. And you come to a point eventually where even if someone was to teach you in Russian, you wouldn't mind, you'd understand it anyway. <laughs> so, uh, which basically means that the university gives you like a, um, a full-fledged um, Russian training. At the That's university right. Itself. That's right. right. Um, now I'm going to ask you something quite personal. A question a lot of parents would want to ask if they're about to send a girl overseas. Mm -hmm. How safe is Belarus? Oh, that's a very good question because my parents had that same concern. Mm -hmm. Uh, if the statistics are right, I've heard that the ratio of women to men is 3 is to 1 mm. in Belarus. And I'd say Vitebsk is an extremely safe city for a girl to be in. I feel more safe in Vitebsk than I do sometimes in my <laughs> own hometown here. Uh, it's a very safe place to be for girls. You can travel on your own. You can head out at night on your own without any fear. Mm -hmm. If I've witnessed it firsthand, if someone were to come and bother somebody, everyone on the streets would pay attention to it and they would not be silent. They'd make sure that you're not being bothered. And it's overall a very pleasant experience to be a girl in Vitebsk in Belarus. Apart from the academics, how was the extracurricular activities at college? I've seen you being <laughs> a major persona in this entire, let's say, call it a beauty contest or be it <laughs> dance or whatever it is. How was it? I mean, tell me about your extra life, uh, extracurricular life at Vitebsk. So extracurriculars in Vitebsk are to put it in one word, amazing. Mm -hmm. We have I have no complaints with regards to that at all. I thought that when I left school, I wouldn't be able to continue whatever I did. Mm -hmm. But I ended up doing exactly what I did in school, plus more and learning more. We have a bunch of sports that you can select from. You can play basketball, you can do cricket, badminton, futsal, so much more. There are a few sports that the university offers, such as American football, if you're interested. They have regular board game competitions mm -hmm. going on. Uh, you can dance. We have a dance group that was formed by the Sri Lankan students, so you can take part in that. You can participate in those. Our university is known for having concerts for absolutely 
anything and everything. <laughs> okay. So you are able to participate in those. So as long as you are someone who can balance between your academics and your extracurriculars, mm -hmm. you'll have an extremely enjoyable experience there. So you get to know about uh, Witted State Medical University through IMC, mm -hmm. and that is through uh, Mr. Amila Kulatunga. How was his support? Uh, his support as in how was he helpful for you to select uh, Belarus as a destination? To so study? when I came to IMC I was an extremely confused straight out of school student because the plan I initially had was not working out and I had to think of something mm. new very fast. So Mr. Amila within a single sittings consultation he helped me decide what option was best for me, he helped me decide where what sort of accommodation I should have picked. He even went the extra mile to find me a roommate within okay. my first month of consultation in Sri Lanka. And he made sure that my transition from my life in Sri Lanka to my life in Belarus was extremely smooth. And it didn't stop just there. He kept in touch with me constantly. Mr. Amila, Mr. Intikab as well, constantly kept in touch mm. with me. And they visited Belarus mm. a couple of yeah. times as well. And we met there. They made sure to bring a few parcels for us as well to help us out and even after coming back I have constantly always been in contact with them there has never been a period of time where we weren't in touch mm -hmm. so it was really nice to know that there was someone looking out for us someone mm -hmm. who knew what was happening and even the office in um, Belarus as well like I have always constantly been in touch with IMC, IMC throughout my six years. So to anyone who's listening to this, if you are looking at a safe place or uh, to a, or looking at a university that has a close contact of your student, I believe uh, the IMC office in Belarus is a great example. And um, uh, this is a news alert for you. If you perform really well in your academics, um, IMC also has an intern program where we give um, an IMC coordinatorship for our students. And Dr. Vidhi, you were one of our IMC coordinators. Um, and you were also a part of the IMC office in Belarus. Yes. If you could comment on how exactly the service uh, from our IMC Belarus office to the newcomers and how you played a role in assisting us back when you were in Belarus. So I started when I was in my fourth year. Mm -hmm. So for middle of my fourth year, so it was about two and a half years that I worked for the Alpha IMC office in Belarus. So I met a lot of different students who came from different backgrounds, had different requirements, had parents who had different concerns and we had to look into every single one of those. So you could come from anywhere and have any sort of concerns but be assured that we look into it. Sometimes even at our own inconvenience we would yeah. make sure that your convenience was put first. Uh, as soon as students landed we developed a sort of algorithm that we uh, followed for each student. So we would make sure first of all that you have any adequate winter clothing if you don't have any mm. winter clothing we'd make sure you so immediately from the point of time where the students land is where we start working with them. So uh, me and the other coordinators we generally took turns and we'd receive the students from the airport so that at least they have a familiar face mm. to meet. Your meals for the first four days have all been sorted and handled by us so you don't need to worry about cooking or not having anything to eat. We take students winter shopping to make sure they're well geared for the winter and they're ready to brave the weather. Their medical exams are done, their tuition fees, we assist those students who haven't been able to wire transfer the money to pay in person there. And those are just the basic necessities that we do for each student. Beyond that, throughout the entire first year, students have various concerns with regards to how to extend their visas mm. or with accommodation. Yeah. Uh, some students even come to us for small personal matters with their roommates and so on. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is, we have been there to help students as well, whether it's a call at four in the morning, we might be a bit sleepy, but we'll still answer. Or if it's in the evening where someone doesn't know how to turn on their gas cooker, you name it and we have been there to help students so you can be rest assured that we are there to help you out. So um, now that's coming out from Dr. Vidhi Chand and if you are concerned about applying to a university uh, which also gives you um, quite a good support in terms of settling you in Belarus you can select um, Viteb State Medical University as your um, second home for your medical degree. Dr. Vidhi Chand, we at IMC Education are super proud to have you back here in Thank SL. You. We hope you excel in your ERPM examination, you. which is uh, two months away. Um, and with all of that, uh, we'd like to wish you all the very best and hoping to see you soon in our next video intro. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much.